Okay, the recording has started. Let's uh, begin the meeting at 6.02. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Hearing none, is there any public comment? Hearing none, do we have any meeting minutes to approve? I don't know that we do. Anyone out there know of meeting minutes that have been sent out to be approved, to be reviewed? No, okay. Wait, to my meeting. knowledge, um, Jerry, Jerry, nobody Jerry. sends out minutes anymore. You have to go on the website and, and uh, download them. Am I correct? I, okay. So does anyone, any, and has anyone been through the minutes and wanna make a motion to approve them? Hey, I move to approve it. them. Okay, as I heard RD say he made a motion to approve. Is there a second? David Healy's trying to talk, but he's muted. I made, I, I made yeah. an error. They're, they're not on the website. That was, they're not on the website. The website has January 22, and that's what I saw. And so, no, that's January right. 23 okay. is not there. Okay. okay. That's helpful so because that's what I thought. Okay, so we are, we are going to... Uh, rescind that motion and we're not going to move forward with the minutes. So let's move on to the treasurer's report. So um, thank you. I sent out uh, some materials earlier today yep. and um, hopefully you've had an opportunity to look at them. If you have not, uh, update your driver. Not now, I don't think, right? So right. we'll, um, I think this is where I wanna go here. And uh, what screen are you looking at? Are you seeing? Are you seeing the uh, balance, balance sheet? sheet the right? balance. We're okay, seeing the wonderful. balance sheet. Okay, I sent out three reports. One with a balance sheet, uh, profit and loss, and expenses for uh, January. And I guess the point here is that kind of the bottom line is that uh, nine point six million dollars is the um, uh, total is the fund balance <clears throat> at the end of January. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to and so the bank account shows up here nine million dollars uh, plus accounts receivable. Um, so get, bringing us up to this um, uh, 9.6. The profit and loss, a couple of things I wanted to bring to your attention. <clears throat> One was total administration expenses of about $24,000. And I'm interested in seeing what the next months look like. And uh, once we start bringing people on board, what that's going to be, because we need to project out for the next 24 months, what our administration expenses are going to be. But of, of note, I think, are uh, $221,000 of make-ready services. And this is just January. Um, and uh, materials uh, payments of $173,000. David? Yeah, uh, on the balance sheet, does that include uh, all the, that's, I don't know what you call them, things that we've got commitments to that we haven't paid for? Uh, not yet, no. So that's an important piece of information. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. Um, the last one here is expenses by vendors. So I wanted to bring to your attention some of the uh, major uh, um, expenses here. Green Mountain Power, $83,000. And that would be in, in make ready uh, work. KGP Logistics is our materials purchases. Uh, same with Power and Tell for 39,000. KGP was 133,000. And WEC, uh, $95,000, and that's basically make ready. So this is, uh, and so the month of $425,000 for, um, for vendor expenses. David, you still have a question? No. Okay. Uh, any comments, questions, observations? Yes. I feel uh, one, uh, Go ahead. Sorry, one quick question, Ray. Um, what is the lag department? of consolidated communications. The lag department. Those are the make ready folks. They're, yeah. they're, they're the folks that do the write outs and uh, perform perform the estimates of the work that needs to be done for uh, work on CCI polls. So is that actually consolidated that's doing this service for us? Uh, if they have polls, the answer is yes. They have a requirement to perform make ready work. Thank you, I understand now. 
Yeah, there's two separate divisions, one that's competing with us and one that has the poles. Got it. Yeah, if there are no the further. Reason, the reason we have consolidated communications with a $73 bill there is that's that's the internet at our warehouse. So not, not to it. be confused. Understood, thank you. And if there are no further questions. Thanks, Ray. I, I'd like to make just two comments on the treasurer's report. There, there's two important things to note here, and one of them was already brought up. First is that we have an audit. We have what's known as a single audit that we have already hired a firm to perform, and we are working uh, towards having that audit accomplished. That's an audit that needs to be done and presented to the federal government because we have passed the th threshold of receiving X amount of money from the federal government. So we need to perform this single audit. And we put we got this firm on board a year ago, knowing that it is a very difficult task to find someone to perform this kind of work. Uh, somebody just had their hand up, and I can't quite see who it is. It's Ted. Ted, please. I was just curious if there is an audit committee or how the work of an audit is planning to be divided amongst folks because there's a lot of work. Having, yeah, Ted. Well, yeah, Ted. The Go good ahead, news ahead, is, Ray. Ted. The good news is you're on that committee. <laughs> so, well, both. I think asking the question would be the prerequisite. So, congrats, yeah. congratulations. <laughs> well, it's we the know fine, we, the, the the so answer to that is the finance committee is 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 running that. We have a treasurer that participates. We have our. Uh, of course, Janiel is involved in everything we do. We 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 have a, an accounting firm that manages uh, our books on a day-to-day -day basis, and then we hired a firm specifically to perform this audit. So right now, the accountant and the auditor are collaborating to make sure we have everything we need, and it floats down to us to make sure that we have presented everything appropriately. Cool. That sounds great. Yeah. So we don't have a, a separate committee for the audit. I, I don't know that we necessarily need one. We have hired guns doing that for us. Well, I, I just might note that it, it is called the Finance and Audit Committee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good, Ray. Thank you. The, the, the second thing I want to point out, and I just, I just want to mention this because RD brought it up, is that one of the tasks that we are putting a lot of our effort in at the moment is being able to project our flow of funds uh, where we are getting to the point now where most of the things that we're going to be spending our money on are starting to um, have start invoicing us, that we're actually spending the money that we thought we were going to spend, it, at least in all these various categories. Uh, and what we're working on now is getting a month or two under our belt so that we actually understand the flow and then we're going to make projections. We've make we've been making projections all along, but now we're getting better better data to make tighter projections and that goes to RD's comment and, and Ray's response that yeah, it would be a really good idea to know how we're going to spend this money in the future. That's something we're spending a substantial effort on understanding. Uh, anything else on treasurer's report? So we can uh, move on. Thank you. Um, Janiel, there's a, a executive director's update. Oh, wait, we have a David Lawrence. Go ahead before we move on, sir. Yeah, I just had uh, one quick question. What's a lag department? <laughs> oh, you, you, you missed that. It, it, I don't know what LAG stands for. I'm presuming it's uh, an acronym, but that is Consolidated Communications those are the folks that are in charge of their polls. And we're required to pay a fee if we're gonna put anything on their polls and, and uh, we are required to pay for their make ready requ uh, service requirements, including a ride out and developing an estimate for cost. So that's their LAG department. We okay, also pay $70 a month to CCI for internet services. Thank you. Two different things. Jeremy, Matt, I see your hands up, sir. Yeah, uh, so did the minutes get approved or did you skip over because I was having trouble with Teams? 
We skipped over the minutes because we weren't sure that we actually had read them. Oh, uh, I sent them out, like on, I believe, the 14th. Okay, um, that, that, there, there weren't enough month? of us that were able to grasp that, so we, we, we okay, missed I, it. I will resend them and then we can do it next month. Sorry, no, today's, today's the 14th, Jeremy. No, uh, 114. So, oh, okay. Like they're four not days on the after website. the government. Jeremy, the, Jeremy, they're not on the website. Right, I know, I'm behind on that. Okay. <laughs> yes, happy, I'm, happy I'm, Valentine's I'm Day. I'm behind on a lot of things, so <laughs> we all are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, everybody's shaking their head. Okay, Janiel, would you please um, move on with the uh, executive director's update, please? You're muted, Janiel. You're still on mute. I'm sorry, we didn't hear any of that. <laughs> That's a dollar in the jar. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Um... I'm just going to go through what was on the executive director's report, AKA business as usual, which of course is not usual um, because everything is happening so quickly. There's always something new, but uh, going down uh, the, the list of things that are going on with CV fiber, uh, public engagement Crawford agency is um, developing an, an internal document. It's a working document um, that is, uh, work product for internal um, brand voice and temple for for CV Fiber, and uh, we're expected to hear from them this evening. We have new subscribers or pre-subscribers on the Crowd Fiber interface on our website. We have at least 875 pre-registrations for uh, updates to the CV Fiber services, and we are now at about five and a half miles of strand and one and a third miles of fiber that Eustace has been hanging in Callis. And we are working on getting getting ready the OLT site so that we can start constructing the OLT pads in Middlesex and in Callis. We are hiring an operations manager, which will be the second full-time employee for CV Fiber. We received 80 applications for this full-time position. And we are conducting, we, we, we whittled it down to eight, then to five or six, and now it's down to three. So we have three interviews tomorrow with three relatively local folks who are qualified um, on their resumes to be an operations manager for CV Fiber. We expect this person to start in March. We'll be coming back to um, the board with a recommendation uh, following the hiring process and back um, all of the reference checks in next month. The next role that we'll be hiring for is community relationship manager. This person will be uh, hired on the heels of the operations manager. So that will be a person who will be collaborating with communications and with Crawford agency and will be working toward community relationships, essentially public engagement. Poll licenses, we now have 22 poll licenses. This represents about 150 miles of green light on existing utility poles. I don't know. Um, as for funding, we're working with NRTC toward funding options. Something that wasn't mentioned in the written report is that we're also looking at, um, at possibly going early to the bond market and what is required or what this entails so that we can start looking at other funding options so that we are in 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 so that we are we're green in more ways than just our licenses so that we have licensed green lights and we have green as in money. Um, materials, we've received materials bids. NRTC is helping us compare the 200 additional miles of materials bids. And we are close to full on our warehousing. So we're we're considering all of the options such as have 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 our suppliers hold some, maybe some um, some extra space in Montpelier. And most importantly, can we burn through some of the existing 
uh, fiber that we have in stock so that we can make room for new fiber. So the more the more materials we build, put in the sky, um, the more we can accept. So this is this is progress. This represents progress. So that's the tip of the iceberg. Thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll add one more one more thing to that, and and that is um, as we're as we're moving forward and as we're actually starting construction and planning for future construction. So much of this needs to be planned well in advance. The lead times are almost a full year on some of the items that are absolutely critical. The lead times are in the 48 week, 46 to 48 week range on lead time. So you, 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 you have to commit money early in order to have the materials when you need them. Make ready lead times are, you, it could take six to eight months to get the make ready uh, accomplished in the place that you, you want it accomplished, you need it accomplished. The thing is, is that we really need to be careful that we don't, um, get over our skis, that we don't obligate more money than we have, that we make sure that our spending is in the right place at the right time so that we're not making sure we have make ready fully accomplished for an area that we don't have construction funds to go to for another two years. So th this is all part of the projections that we need to make so that we can scale and control our spending to match our to match our funding. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not, um, you know, just pedal to the metal and, and shoot forward as fast as we possibly can. We need to be, we need to move forward strategically so that we're as efficient as possible. As much money as we spend on construction, somebody can get lit. We, we don't, we don't do any good if we have make ready and strand throughout the entire area and nobody subscribed because we don't have any any areas lit. So we're we're looking very hard at managing our spend, coordinating 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 our construction so that we have as many lit opportunities as possible as we spend our construction funds. So I, I just wanted to lay that lay that out for folks because that is a uh, a math problem we've been working on for for quite a bit here. And I'm going to go to R.D. I see your hand is up. It's just a, a very briefly, a keep in mind that there, there may be warehouse space in Cabot um, if you need it. Um, and let me know well in advance um, because we may decide to do something else with it um, if CB Fiber doesn't want to jump in. That's all. Do you mean this is the town that has property that could be used for warehouse? Is this indoor or outdoor? Indoor, and that is what I mean. Okay, well, Janiel, you got that, right? Yeah, I got that. And RD, um, I, I do want to know more about this uh, warehousing opportunity in Cabot. So if we can have a conversation offline, that would be great. Okay. Thank you, RD. Uh, any any other questions for, for Janiel? At the moment, so it looks like Janiel that you may have talked about our operation manager search update. Um, maybe Ray, would you like to add anything to that, or I can if you if you don't want to. No, go ahead. So I I would just additionally point out that as we're winnowing down and coming to a short list of folks that we're that we're interested in, uh, we had a series of informational interviews that maybe interviews isn't the right term. We had a series of informational sessions where with three of the candidates, we sat with them for half an hour, 45 minutes, and really explained to them to the extent we could who we are, where we're going, what we're doing, and in, in, in quite detail, I might add, um, so, so that they can basically see what they're getting into and, and make sure that there's a good fit uh, between um, them and us and make sure that they fully understand us and that we're presenting all the information that they would need to make a decision as well as we get from them the information that we need. So these weren't interviews in the sense, 
that we were asking them questions. This was really more about sharing information and presenting them information. We, we did all of that just a, a couple of days ago in advance of the, the interviews, actual interviews that we are, we are going to have uh, tomorrow. So I, I just wanted to let, bring folks up to date on, on what we're doing there. Um, anything else on the operations manager search? We're very pleased, by the way, with the, uh, certainly with the three folks that we're looking at now, we're quite pleased we would do well with any of them. So I think we're in a good, we're in a good spot there. Uh, public engagement manager, um, Janelle, would you like to, to take on this discussion or maybe it's Chuck, whomever, whomever would like to lead this, please. Sure. Janelle, um, you want me to kick it off? Out. Um, yeah, you go ahead. Sure. No, <laughs> look at us, look at us. Okay, that's fine. Yes, we need somebody to help <laughs> collaborate with communications committee, with myself, with Crawford Agency, um, with our, our members of the public. We, we really need somebody to be the glue um, in that regard. And so a few months ago, we decided we'll, we'll start putting together a job description for a community relationship manager. Um, NEK Broadband hired such a person. Um, this person helped with press events, collaborating with um, their marketing and getting the word out, social media. And now that we have Crawford Agency on board as well, we want a point of contact with our marketing agency, maybe some local influencers as well. So, so the idea behind this role is on the heels of the operation manager, we'll be hiring our third full-time employee, and that will be this person. It will be a person who will be involved in the public engagement for all of our communities um, and a collaborator with among all of our partners. So that that is the, the need, the ask, and we've started putting together a hiring group and a job description for this person. We expect this person is likely to start um, more than likely in April if we're realistic about it, um, but on the heels of the operations manager. We'd like to get this job posted this month. Well, Chuck, go ahead, please. Thank you. Um, I would just like to stress the importance of, uh, of opening this position for us. Um, first of all, I will also point out that we have changed the name since the agenda was written. We're really targeting calling this position the community relationship manager. Um, it is certainly public engagement. It is certainly a bit marketing, but it's really about how do we talk to our communities? How do we bring them along with us? How do we make sure they understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, how we're doing it? And uh, at the end of the day, uh, how they can either get involved or you know get the updates that they need or become subscribers if 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 they have service in their area. So it's a it's a very broad scope of a role. Um, you know, at a, at a at a corporation, there'd probably be you know eight ten people doing doing this job, uh, and unfortunately, we don't have that luxury. So we're going to have to find somebody who is a little bit of a generalist and and has a broad set of skills to to try to fill in on this. But the good news is, we'll be um, powering empowering them uh, with additional capabilities via contracts such as Crawford and Cornerstone, uh, uh, Crowd Fiber. Um, and in all of these cases, we, we really just need that person who has the one holistic view of all the goings on. Uh, and to date, that has been shared by you know a few of us, uh, in particular, uh, Janiel and Linda and myself, although Ray and David have also um, um, engaged on it to a fair degree. But it's a lot, a lot of work. Um, and we have been relying on volunteers for this. And, and you know, many of us uh, are are working a lot of hours to make it happen. And, and we're at a point where we need to step up our game and really take this to a professional degree of relationship with our communities and, and making sure that we're able to uh, engage with our communities in, in the best way possible. Um, we have to put front a professional image that shows that we are committed to building a sustainable community network. And to that end, I believe this position is incredibly important to fill. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Chuck. I, I would add one thing, and that is that this position is already in our budget. 
it was anticipated that we would require someone to fill a role as has just been described. Um, is there a motion that's been developed for this evening? There is. If there are no other questions, I'd be happy to uh, put it forward. Well, we can have questions after your motion. That's fine. Sure we can. All right. Um, whereas it has become necessary to hire a community relationship manager due to the increased need for public engagement, uh, managing the relationships between our communications committee, Crawford agency and partners, and due to the increasing need to set and manage consumer expectations. Whereas the CV Fiber 2023 budget has accounted for the hiring of a community relationship manager. Whereas a hiring group has been invited to finalize the job description and post the job description. Whereas the executive committee recommends the governing board to approve the posting of the CV Fiber community uh, relationship manager position. It is moved that the governing board approve the posting of the CV Fiber community relationship manager position and authorizes the executive committee to manage the application process, the appointment of a community manager application review working group, and make a hiring recommendation to the board. Second. Second. Oh, Siobhan, I think you got in there. Siobhan, give it to Siobhan. She I, got uh, it. Yeah, I think, I think she earned it. Another she notch got that one. in her, another notch in the handle. <laughs> the microphone, you mean, RD? <laughs> mouse, it's in my mouse. Is is yeah. is there a is there additional discussion on this? Is there anything that anyone would like to bring up or question? Folks have been working on this for quite a while, I must say. Quite hard as well. Well, I don't I don't see any hands raised for additional discussion. So let let's let's move through this then. Are there any opposed to the motion? Are there any abstentions? It appears to me that the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. I thank would you like all. to uh, thank Ray in particular, as always, for helping put together the motions because he does just such a good job of it. I'm, I'm the whereas guy. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to thank Ray for everything he does for CV Fiber <laughs> since you opened that can of worms. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. All right. Uh, what's next on my agenda here? Ah, committee membership appointments. So we want to want to make sure that we're doing this right. You know that we're playing according to Hoyle, and we have a, a number of committees where. It appears to be uncertain as to who the committee members are, and we've we've had questions about who to count for a quorum. The executive committee is the easy one, so I'm 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 lucky here because that that's that's quite simple and straightforward. But I would I would like to ask the other committee chairs to identify who's on their committee, and let's just confirm that we have the right folks on the committee and give that a thumbs up so that we all know who's on which committee. And if there may be folks that don't know they're on a committee, or there may be folks that want to be on a committee that aren't. So, you know, here's an opportunity to, to clear, that, clear that all up. And I'm going to ask David to go first with the Planning and Development Committee. Thank you, David. You're on mute, sir. I can't read and talk at the same time. Anyway, <laughs> the uh, as far as I know, the committee currently is Jeremy Matt, Ray Pelletier, Siobhan, Jeremy Hansen, Tom Fisher, Linda Gravel, and Christopher Shank, who is the alternate. And I believe Henry is on here, but he's not on the website. So Henry is the last one that I know of. Now, if I left somebody out or did somebody drop out that I don't know? Yes, Jeremy Hansen mentioned in the spreadsheet that he can be removed from this committee. All right. Is everybody else good with that list? David, my only question so, is, am, am I uh, ex officio on this committee? Am I ex officio on all committees? How does that work? Or do I need to put my name on a specific you, you, you committee? Need, you, you need to tell me. 
I, I believe I'm ex officio on all committees. I'll let I'll let okay. uh, our our parliamentarian Alan uh, challenge that if I'm wrong, please. I wouldn't mind nominating you. I uh, I can't challenge what I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. An an honest man. Thank you, Alan. Oh, that that okay. me before anyway. I'll check the statutes. <laughs> Jeremy, so, Matt, your hand is up, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to get these uh, figured. I'd update them on the website right right now. So the, the list of names that I have is myself, Ray Pelletier, Siobhan Paracone, Jeremy Hansen is going to be removed. Uh, then, sorry, who else? You said Tom Fisher, Linda, and Christopher. Yeah, and then Henry. And Henry, okay. And now, and, and then uh, Jerry, Jerry Diamantides. Okay. Jeremy Hansen pointed out that he was not ex officio on all of the committees when he was chair, and I don't, I don't think that that's part of the rules. That's fine. Whichever way, whichever way it lands, that's fine. Thank you. Then can we uh, can we move on to the uh, finance committee? Yeah, so I'm gonna I'll just post this in the uh, in the chat room to make this easier for for a few people anyway. And <clears throat> see if I can get that in here right. There we go. Uh, so the members of the committee, in addition to myself, uh, Jerry, Tom Fisher, Christopher Shank, uh, Ted Barnett, David Mannix. And uh, Phil Caccini is um, is is the new member. Um, if it's approved by the board this evening, I don't I don't know if this is you know the the place for this, but I'm going to have to drop from that committee because I can't I can't do Thursday nights when it's being scheduled. So okay, I'll be taken off. I mean, I think now is exactly the time to. Yep. To do that. And to be clear, that's that's PDC, not finance. Yes. Well, it's it's both, but PDC is kind of up in the air. And I from what I understand, finance has has landed pretty firmly on on Thursday, but PDC may not be. Is that right, right. right David? That's correct. Tomorrow at our meeting on Thursday night, we'll we'll fix we'll pick a date that fits most people's schedule, which looks like it's gonna be Mondays. And and at our next executive committee meeting, we'll finalize all the dates. So as as folks are are, are getting that straight. Yep. And I so think we can make a motion at the end of this session to approve all of what has gone down. Okay, Jeremy. Yep. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you read my mind. Yes, indeed. I could see the panic because it's going a streaking across your face. Uh, Chuck, can we can we move on to the communications committee, please? We may. Um, similar to Ray, I'll go ahead and paste the current membership. So we have uh, myself, of course, John Walters, uh, David Healy, Ray Pelletier, John Morris, Linda Gravel, and Marshall Cottrell. Um, the only change we are likely to make is uh, Marshall has unfortunately had to step away uh, and has not been able to attend any meetings. So I, I need to follow up with Marshall um, to uh, find out if he wants to officially resign uh, um, his membership of the committee, uh, or we could take an action to remove him if we wanted to as, as the board. Um, but I will say, you know, if there's anybody else interested, obviously we we have a, a vacant seat. If you want to, uh, if you want to join us on communications initiatives. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, Jeremy, go ahead. So, uh, sorry, going back to Phil, he's not a board member. Is that correct anymore? Because he was treasurer, and then that's right. He's okay. Not, yeah, he'd be he's a, community, community a community volunteer. A community volunteer, right? Alan, sir, are you ready to uh, engage? Uh, yes. So I've just sent the members of the uh, policy committee to everybody. It's myself, it's John Morris, it's Ray, Siobhan, 
It's Lexis Julian and Linda Gravel. So there's six of us. Jeremy, your hands up again. What, oh, what do you need, sir? That's a residual. I'm just fighting with the website. Oh, OK, OK. Um, I guess, uh, Jerry, before we made a motion, looks like we have all four now, right? Or yeah, um, I guess I'd ask if there are any people who are attending the meeting who'd like to participate on any of these committees, if they could raise their hand. I, you know, they always always accept some volunteers on the finance committee, and there may be some others that you might be interested in. Hey, Ray, would you mind, or would somebody mind reminding us um, what nights of the week each committee is on? <clears throat> so the finance committee is the first Thursday of the month. I just pasted in chat the current proposal that is on the table. Um, it sounds like PDC is a little bit. Whoop, did it not send? It didn't send. Why didn't she send? There it goes. Um, it sounds like PDC may may still be potentially changing things, but this is the the current proposal that is is under review uh, for the committees. Sorry, Chuck, what did you mean by that? I'm sorry, I didn't. Um, I, I pasted I'm not in the sure chat. I understood. I pasted okay, in the uh, chat the sorry. current the current proposal for uh, meetings. Um, I guess in the in the interest of, of uh, video dialogue, I'll I'll run through it really quickly. Board would remain unchanged at the second Tuesday of each month. Communications yeah. committee would remain unchanged at the Thursday following the third Tuesday of each month. Executive committee would be changed to now be the first and third Tuesdays of each month. Finance and audit. It, is changed to now be the first Thursday of each month. Planning and Development Committee would be changed to be the Thursday following the board meeting of each month. Uh, and Policy Committee it would be changed to now be on the first Wednesday of each month. So are you offering this as a motion? <clears throat> no, sir, not the schedule as a motion. We're, we, we, still need to, we still need to finalize the schedule. What we're going to offer as a motion will be all of the folks that have confirmed that they are on these committees. RD, to further clarify, people were asking what evenings these committees were meeting yeah. so that they could know whether they're available on those on those evenings. I understood. So, Thank you. So, so to move this thing along, perhaps, I, I move the governing board approve the appointment of the members that were mentioned for each committee as they were identified. Second. Seconded by Jeremy Matt. Thank you. Uh, any any discussion? Is there anybody that wants to be on a committee that we hasn't been recognized? Okay, I don't see any hands. So I'm. Uh, I think we're ready. Then I don't hear any discussion. I don't see any hands. So I believe we're ready to vote on this. Are there any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Thank you for clearing that up, everyone. Uh, looking looking forward to your service. All right. The next item on the agenda is the webinar schedule, and this one is something that that uh, we can run through very quickly. There is going to be a webinar on, I believe it is the thirty first. No, the first of March. And then what we're going to do is we'll, we will do that first, the, 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 the first Wednesday of the month for the rest of every other month for as long as that makes sense. So we're going to go to every other month. It's going to be the first Wednesday of the month. This month, it happens to be March 1st. So that's what, two weeks from now, we're going to have a webinar, update folks on where we are. And we will have another one in, not April, we'll have one in May. Three May. Third of May. Alan, your hand is up, sir. Yeah, and what what time will they be? Because we have our policy committee meeting at five o'clock that on the first Wednesdays. I believe they've been at six. 
but I don't remember. Is it 6.30? Is it later? Was it 7? I apologize, but I'm, I only have one screen, so I can't look it up. Is it 7? I think it's 7. Should be okay. Yeah. <clears throat> And I don't, I don't know that we need to uh, have any motion on that. That's, that's just the schedule of the, of the webinar as, it, as it's going to be put forward. Always subject to change. RD, sir. Um, do you have any, um, Jerry, do you have any statistics on attendance at these webinars? I do not, sir. Uh, others may. Is there anyone out there that has any, any knows how many times we've been clicked? So I think the attendance. Go ahead. Janil, did you, what did you say? There have, been, there have been 20 or 30 people at the webinar itself, but then people will click. The, the answer that I don't know is how many times people are clicking on the webinar after it's already posted to our website or somewhere else. Okay, understood. Thank you. It would be, it would be, um, it would be an interesting uh, datum to know how many people actually click in on the evening of these webinars. Now on the evening of, during the webinar itself, the, uh, 20 to yeah. 30, okay? So we Good. have that answer. What we don't know is how many people bring it up the next day or the day after, you know? Okay, excellent. That's that's something our um, our marketers uh, should should know about. Yes, our, no our November update has, had, has received 43 views on the website. Good. Thank you. So obviously the, the attempt here is to maintain some transparency, transparency and keep people up to date. And frankly, as they see more uh, fiber being strung, uh, there's going to be a lot more interest. So I think that we're going to see something grow. Yeah, personally, I feel it's something that we need to do, we should be doing. So it's, you know, the, the number of viewers may be small, but we are providing the opportunity, um, which I personally believe is something we should be doing. I don't, I don't the think numbers, the word the webinar is in the statute, but. The numbers described were not small. They were very good. Okay, the next item on the agenda, subscriber agreement and subscription package. Uh, Janil, is this gonna be you, Chuck? You gonna do this together again? Well, there's a couple things going on here. We got um, we got the subscriber agreement approved through legal, but then Waitsfield came back with a few more substantive comments through their um, contractor bottomer. So we'll I'll incorporate some more comments into the subscriber agreement. And then the subscription packages, there's a design that um, Crawford's working on the design of the uh, subscription packages that'll be integrated into Crowdfiber. David Healy, you're laughing because this is taking so long. But yes, there's a process, there's a process. Um, but there but there are two separate things here. There's the subscriber agreement that we need to post 45 days in advance of offering service um, pursuant to our CPG. Um, and then there's the design that needs to be integrated for the user interface and experience when people sign up. Janil, my understanding is that there is an action to be taken by the board on this, or am I mistaken? There's no action needed? Just to post the subscriber agreement, because we're going to have to post it 45 days in advance of our um, offering services. That's but we're not ready. To our CPG. And we're not ready to do that. Well, I think we are. We just need a motion for it. Motion to I would so move. approve posting of the of the subscriber agreement that Janil just described. <laughs> Second. Seconded by Siobhan. A additional discussion? Hearing none, are there any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? The motion passes. Thank you very much. Is there uh, another part to this that needs to be addressed now, Janil, or is that for a later time? 
Well, we already we already got um, an approval of subscription packages, so we just have to finalize the details and get that posted. So that's already been approved. So those two things will be posted. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, well, we've moved through this in good time, and I think what I'll do, Janiel and Chuck, I would I would like to hand this over to you guys so that you can orchestrate. Uh, our contractor, and 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 I'll I'll let you two please even follow up with taking questions or whatever whatever that is. You guys have been uh, far more involved in this than I have, so I'll let the two of you run it. So let me hand this over to Janiel and and Chuck and and let them uh, be the MC for what what's coming up next. Janiel, would you like me to set some context for the board while you ping Crawford and let them know that we're ready for them? Okay, Crawford is here. We have we oh, have great. Andy Wyndham, we have Ted Rook, we have Jennifer um, Pakansky, and those three individuals will be. Um, what what they have been doing is developing for CV Fiber an internal document. This is work product that is not to be a public document, but rather is an internal working document for CV Fiber to to then be the foundation of marketing plan marketing plan. Um, so they are developing uh, a brand temple and a brand voice for CV Fiber. Um, again, this is an internal document, and they will be presenting that to the delegates um, for for information and feedback. It sounds like we might want to go into executive session for this, but Siobhan has her hand up. Let's do that. That's first, please. just ahead, what Siobhan. I was going to ask. Do we want to go to an executive session for that? The answer is yes. Is that, and, is, <laughs> and what's our grounds for that? Yeah, um, strategic planning. Okay. So let me, um, I've been using the chat room and I've been putting stuff in there. I don't know if you've seen it. Have you seen it? Uh, because, um, yes. it, okay. Cause Chuck, you, you said you put some stuff in there and I haven't seen any of your stuff. So maybe oh, I, I haven't, I haven't seen anything recently. Which chat room are you putting it into? The, the meeting chat room on this, on the website here on the, uh, on team. Put, put it the in now, Ray, and I'll let you know. You, the last thing I see from you, Ray, is 637. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't see the the members of the different committees and stuff. Yes, you didn't yes, see that. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, the motion is to move that we enter executive session to discuss a strategic planning that is confidential pursuant to one VSA section three thirteen alpha six specifically um, brand development that relate to our strategic plan um, and Second. invite. Let me find the language on that. <clears throat> Um, and invite members of the board, both delegates, alternates, and committee volunteers to attend the session in accordance with 1 VSA Section 313 Alpha 3. Second. And 313 and Bravo. Oh, sorry. Second. <laughs> All right. Seconded by Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. And of just a, a reminder that once we are in executive session, we should not be using the chat, okay? Because the the, ch the chat does not distinguish that. Uh, Chuck, your hand is up, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, Ray, the, that chat still hasn't come through on that motion. If you could try to send it again when you when you have a chance, thank you. I'll do that. I was looking at the um, the participants on the call to make sure we didn't leave anybody out. Did any, so is I, anybody on the call who felt felt like they weren't included in the invitation? I don't remember hearing uh, representatives of Crawford, or, or did I miss that? <laughs> and of course, representatives of Crawford. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, just to let Sybil know, um, I will finish the rest of the minutes after. Uh, See, so it, it probably doesn't make sense for you to wait around while we're in executive session. And and Ray, I believe uh, to be sure, let's make sure uh, that staff yes. are included. Right. And staff. So delegates, alternates, <laughs> community volunteers, staff, and the members of uh, Crawford. Thank you. 
Sybil could stay as a community volunteer, right? Uh, I guess so. I mean, I don't know. Usually yeah. when uh, we had um, CVRPC taking the minutes, they would scoot out. So um, if you, do you want me to take notes or not? <laughs> not during executive session. We, we okay. no, then there's no, I mean, that's the whole point of an executive yeah. session is there is no record of it. Okay. Um, All right. So then it doesn't really make sense for me to stay. Right. And then you just be sitting around twiddling your thumbs for, you know, 45 minutes or however long it takes us to get through this. Um, I think probably you have better things to do to spend your time. I might. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you, Sybil. Thank you. Thanks, Good, night. Good night. Thank you, Sybil. D uh, please remind me, did we get a second on this motion? Yeah, I did. Okay. Second by Jeremy, Matt. Are there additional discussion? Alan, sir? This is discussion about the motion to go into executive session. Yes, sir. I just want to make sure that people understand how we're doing this and how there are some limits to what we can talk about when we're in executive session. What Ray has uh, cited as a reason why we can go into the executive session is part of the open meeting law section of uh, Vermont statutes, and it reads records exempt from the access. Uh, I'm sorry, this is what allows you to go into an executive session um, uh, on this issue. Number six says records exempt from the access to public records provisions of section 316 of this title. 316 is the, uh, is the records rather than the meeting part of the statutes. So what we're actually doing is reaching into a claim that we make about the record itself being confidential and premature disclosure would put us at a disadvantage. There's a provision to this though that says discussion of the exempt record, the exempt record again is the document we're going to be talking about, shall not itself permit an extension of the executive session to the general subject to which the record pertains. So we have to stay focused on the document document or documents that are being presented to us and not get off in a general description that's not based on those records. And I think what this provision is trying to do is to make sure that this doesn't become a way where you could make a claim that there's some information from a record that's going to uh, make it impossible for you to have a public session. So you go into executive session and you end up talking about all sorts of other stuff. This tries to limit it to the record itself. So I just wanted to make sure people understood how this is working. That's excellent, Alan, thank you. That's very helpful. Thank you. Chuck, I see your hand was up. I'm, I'm all set, thank you. Okay, thank you. So, all Chuck, right. Did, you want, did Chuck, were you gonna provide any more background as to um, what what we're about to be presented with? The, yeah, the, I, 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 I intend to. Uh, I guess yeah. the question is, do you want me to wait until we're in an executive session or should I go ahead and do that right now? I think do it now. But hearing sure. based on what we just heard from Alan and then we will get the presentation itself will be an executive session. Sounds good. Um, all right. So, um, yeah. All right. So in order to move us forward uh, in devising a strategic marketing plan of how we are going to go out and engage our communities, how we're going to go out, build a brand awareness, and go out and get people to know about us, drive awareness, drive activation by signing up through uh, our website experience, and ultimately getting to the end of that, becoming a subscriber, uh, we have to do some initial groundwork that helps us articulate what are the fundamentals of how we are going to talk about ourselves and what our identity is in the world at large. Uh, so what we're going to be reviewing today 
is the initial work that is called brand development. And in brand development, what you're talking about is what is your identity as an organization and how do you want to talk about yourselves to the world at large? What are your values? What's important to you? Um, what are the things that you want to resonate with customers? What do you want customers to come away from every engagement with you feeling? And it's a very important element of, of work that really must be done before you can start planning marketing campaigns and have them really resonate and be effective over time. Sure, we could go out and spend money on marketing campaigns without doing any of this work, but this is a thread that ties all of that together and makes so that you have a cohesive message as you are engaging your, your audience, your community members, our our neighbors. Um, and I will say uh, this work that you're about to see from Crawford has gone through uh, a number of revisions uh, with a with a small working group that has given them feedback and, and helped guide them. Uh, and I, for one, I uh, think it's very, very good work, and I'm very pleased with the outcome of it. Um, but I don't want to shape your opinions too much, so I'll leave that at that. Uh, but I'm I'm really looking forward to unveiling this to the board today. Uh, just a reminder: this is an internal document for now. Uh, obviously, at some point, we'll we'll you know open it back up because everything needs to be open eventually. Uh, so, you know, there won't be anything to hide once we're comfortable with it as an organization. Uh, but right now it is still in development. So consider this an opportunity to provide feedback. Does it resonate with you? Have we hit the mark in, in, in what has been developed? Uh, are there red flags or concerns that you have? This would be an opportunity to address those kinds of topics. Um, and that will help inform this work such that when we reach the final, final deliverable, uh, we'll, we'll be in a, that much of a better place. Um, and with that, I'll stop. If there are any other questions, happy to entertain them in the meantime. Excellent discussion, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you. Any any additional discussion before we vote on going into executive session? I'm not seeing any. Okay, then. Are there any opposed to them? Oh, Jeremy, Matt, go ahead, sir. I, I was just wondering, have we, in, I, I was not 100% paying attention. I, have we presented the exact justification for why it can't be public now? It was an emotion. Other, other than we're, we're trying to. It, it, it's it's internal document, a work in progress. OK. OK, sounds good. Thanks. And, 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 and critical to our strategy moving forward. I'll also add that if if a, a competitor was to get this information, they could use their dollars to undermine us. And that is not a risk we're willing to take. Let's vote then. Any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? All right, hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you very much. We're going to go into executive session. I am going to stop recording. We are going to executive session at seven o'clock. <laughs>